In last week's episode, I took you on location to the heart of the Door Peninsula for a sunrise photo. And although the sunrise was absolutely epic that morning, I was shooting to the west to catch the first rays of dawn sweeping across the valley and illuminating the distant maples and poplar trees that were at the height of their autumn color. You may recall how disappointed I was with the image because I failed to realize at the time that what my camera recorded was not at all what I saw in my mind's eye. So in this week's episode of Behind the Door, I'll walk you through my editing process in Lightroom and Photoshop and show you how I was able to transform this into this. Now I don't profess by any stretch of the imagination to be an expert in either Lightroom or Photoshop, as will soon become all too apparent to some of you. But what I was able to accomplish with these tools just might remind you not to be too quick, as I was, to dismiss an image merely by what you see on the camera's LCD screen. And perhaps it'll inspire you to go back through your image catalog, as I had, and find that diamond in the rough. All right, well, let's take a quick look at this photo here for a second. First of all, sure, the sky is plain, but it's a beautiful blue-gray. You know, clouds have all filled in, and that complements the, the colors in these trees, the yellows and the golds especially. From a composition standpoint, we can see here that, you know, the eye is drawn into the center of this photo by these dark trees in the foreground on either side and of course by the road that leads the viewer's eye further into the photo which is where you want to draw the viewer's eye into the photo not toward the edges but into the center of the photo and have them dwell there and i think that this photo once it is worked up in lightroom here will reveal what is there that the camera didn't see but that my eye saw and it's funny because your eye relates things to the brain much differently than a camera relates that information to a sensor. For instance, these dark trees in here, I didn't see all of this, uh, you know, with my naked eye. But more importantly, and this is, this is kind of my philosophy behind taking photographs, is I want to project in a photograph that I've taken what my eye has seen not necessarily what the camera sensor has seen, because like I said, a camera looks at a scene much differently than the human eye. The human eye, for instance, can zoom in on a particular subject. It has a sense of scale. It, you, there's sound. There's so many other sensory factors that go into what you are looking at that you don't see the distractions, like the glare off of this mailbox or the telephone lines here going across the roadway. Maybe you won't even see this truck or this road sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this photograph to bring out the detail that's in these bushes and trees that you can't see. And I know that it's there because if we look at the histogram here, we can see that sure we don't have a lot of bright colors here but if we click on our darks here we can see that the only darks that are clipping are in this area here and a little bit here and that means there is no detail there we can't bring out that detail which actually is um is fine because what i intend to do is to balance this photograph i am going to probably clip uh, crop it somewhere along here to bring this into the center of the photograph. If we were to look at our um, crop tool here, we can see that the photo is pretty well balanced here between sky, the lightness of the trees, the darkness of the trees, and then the road below. So this is what we're going to work on and I will show you how I edited this photograph coming right up.
All right, so here we are in uh, Lightroom. And the first thing I'm going to do uh, to this photograph, which looks really, really mundane right now, but we'll soon change that, is uh, go through my workflow here. And the first thing I'm going to do then is remove chromatic aberrations and enable my profile corrections for my camera and my lens in the lens correction tab here. And you can see what that has done that kind of took the vignetting and the barrel distortion uh, out of the lens. You can see here that I'm shooting a 200, uh, 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I'm at 200 millimeters, so I'm zoomed all the way in to kind of compress this distance here from where I'm standing to those trees actually are about a mile and a half to two miles away. So um, after lens correction, I'm going to go into the basic development panel here and just start going down the line. The white balance actually is pretty good uh, as shot. Um, I'm going to leave that right where it is for now and uh, not change the tint at all. And the exposure, I'm going to just bump up just a little bit for now. We're actually going to take this photo. We're going to do some basic edits here in uh, Lightroom. Then we're going to bring it into Photoshop to get rid of these distractions like this sign here, um, the truck, uh, the mailboxes here. And, and I noticed this too. The, I thought this was at first the roadway. This is actually the back of a house here. So we're not going to remove that. We're just going to obscure it with some more tree branches uh, just so it doesn't distract um, from the overall image. And then after we remove the uh, distractions, uh, including this bird up here, I see, uh, we'll bring it back into Lightroom and then finish editing. So, all right. The exposure we bumped up just a touch to plus 10. Now, the thing that is most disturbing about this uh, photograph right now is how dark uh, the middle ground is here. But we can see here that uh, we still have all the information here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our highlights and we're going to drag them way down to about minus 85 or so and you can see how that's darkened uh, the sky and uh, brought some more contrast into the trees back here then we're going to take our shadows and we're going to lift our shadows by about the same amount by around 80 plus 85. now you can see all of the detail that's really coming out here now in these trees and bushes alongside the road that our eye could see but the lens and onto the camera sensor could not. So uh, the whites, we're going to bump those way up about 30% uh, or so, maybe 35%. That looks pretty good about there for now. Really brightens those colors um, as the sunlight is hitting on those trees. Blacks, we're going to leave those alone I guess for now all right and down to the next panel then our texture we want to add a little bit of texture to these leaves on these trees but not too much we'll just bump it up a skosh here to about six and then uh, our clarity watch what our clarity does now that's going to really darken our sky and really add a lot of contrast overall into the photo so if, if I just Pull this way down you can see how that how that does that that looks kind of freakish there so we're going to back this down to uh, just about 15 or so and uh, bump our dehaze up just a little bit to give us a little more contrast yeah just a frog's hair all right our vibrants bring out some of those colors, particularly in the back and in the sky, but not too much. We'll work with this again a little bit later. Uh, bring it up to about plus 10, plus 11. Yeah, that looks good. And the saturation again, just, just a little bit to plus two. 
Now, uh, I'm going to go into the detail slider here, and you can see our sharpening is set at 40%. I'm going to drop that down and just start bringing it up slowly to about 20. And that's about all the changes I'm going to make for now on this. I think what we'll do now is bring it over into Photoshop and uh, work on getting rid of these distractions in the photo. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go up here to Photo, Edit in Adobe Photoshop CC, and if we give that a second, it should pop up. There we go. So you can see we have a background layer here. What I'm going to do is right click on the background layer and duplicate that layer. Just have a copy of it so that we always maintain the original. Not that any of the work that we're doing is destructive, but it, it's always good to have a safety backup. All right, well, I already have my tool selected here. It's the spot healing brush, the spot healing brush tool. And uh, I can control the size of the brush by either using the right open bracket to make it larger or the left open black bracket to make it smaller. And I want to uh, first, uh, well, we'll make it real small, get rid of this bird here. Gone. Thank you. Now, uh, I'm going to increase the size of the brush and work on this area in here to fill these branches and trees in to obscure this house. Uh, I want to zoom in, and I can do that by pressing the Command plus key, and it will zoom in to the photo. If I hold down the space bar, I can click and drag to the area that I want. So uh, not that this house is all that uh, distracting. We're just going to click and fill in some of these branches here, like so. Make a few clicks few more clicks, make it look natural. Uh, that's pretty good. Once we zoom back out, you can tell that there's something there, but what exactly? You can't say. Speed this up a little bit so you don't have to sit and go th wait through all of this. That looks pretty natural now, especially when we zoom back out. So the other area that we wanted to uh, look at were these mailboxes. So again, hold the shift key down. I can click and drag. I'm going to make my brush smaller just so that I paint the mailbox and the post and the milk that churn that it's sitting in. A couple clicks around here. This thing also, whatever this is, besides distracting, I don't know. Fill that in with some leaves. Sure, it wasn't there. Okay, now the other thing that is really annoying are these uh, phone lines going across the road. So, uh, we're going to eliminate those, and I'm going to speed up this process so uh, you don't have to wait through the whole thing. That looks pretty good. Zoom back out and take a look at that now. Uh, next, we need to work on that truck. So, make my brush a little bit bigger here. Just going to cover the truck. You can see I have the opacity not set at 100% underneath it, so you can see what you're covering here. And just when I let my finger off the mouse here, that truck will disappear. Looks pretty good. Clean this area up a little bit. And the last thing that we need to do is uh, get rid of this road sign here. This 
indicates on the other side that there was a stop sign ahead. We'll do this in sections here. We'll first get rid of this. And it leaves us with a little bit of a post. We'll just drag this down now. Okay, looks good. What we'll do now is we will uh, we'll save this. Go to File, Save. Once it's saved, we'll close it. And it will automatically open it back up in Lightroom. So now, uh, putting the finishing touches on this, I think what we want to do maybe is increase the exposure just a touch here. Go back to our basic panel. Bring that up about a half a stop. Really brighten it up. And we will uh, we'll tone that down in a minute. We will bring down uh, by bringing down our shadows. About uh, 25 or so, minus 25. Increase our blacks just a touch. And the reason I want to do that is if, if you look here, you can see that uh, where this is clipping here, these areas of black mean that there's no information there. So we want to bring that up so we can get rid of nearly all of it. And I'm not worried about this area here because we're going to crop this in a moment. That looks pretty good. I can see a couple of little spots, but they're not going to mean anything. And uh, I'm going to bring the vibrance down just, just a touch and increase the saturation a little bit. Those trees, we don't want to go too far, make it not look natural. Okay, now the other thing I want to do is I want to add a gradient filter here to the road. On exposure, just to bring the exposure down so that we don't, it isn't distracting, so it leads the eye further into the photo. Um, that looks good. I'm going to add a bit of a circular filter here to increase the exposure in this area to help lead our eye further into the photo. We'll do the same with the brush tool here. We'll increase the exposure there. Make my brush smaller here, just so we can see what is it that's down that road and around that bend. All right, I'm going to brighten up the areas along the roadside here just a touch. Raise that. Back at it again. And then the last thing to do is to crop. You can see here with this layout of, of uh, crop uh, where our center is in the photograph, right where we want the viewer to look. So I'm going to bring this in to get rid of that. See, I'm trying to um, work with these edges here, make sure that there's no tree limbs that are peeking into the edges of the photo. And uh, that looks good about there. And that's essentially it. That's our photo. Quite the difference in the before and after. And uh, quite the lesson in, in understanding, at least for me anyway, the difference between what the human eye sees and what a camera sees and how we can get our cameras to see what our eyes see. Well, that's it, everyone, for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please hit the like button. That's the best way you can help me to get views on this channel. Uh, subscribe if you're inclined. I would appreciate it. And uh, until next time, I guess we'll see you down the road. Take care, everyone.